Jay, you know, you have obviously done some something that's incredible, right? You have done something that is historic, but you have a lot of people who are discrediting what you're trying to build and what you've already built. So my question to you is, how do you sleep at night? Because they're, and I mean this literally, because there are sites, whole sites that people have devoted money and time out of their life to do nothing but discredit the work that you've done. Do you sleep at night? How does this affect you and your family? How does that work for you? Yeah, I sleep well. Um, it, it does have an effect on my family and did have a greater effect on my family and me as we went through criticism from the moment we launched. So people are committed that this ain't right. I believe it ain't right. And no matter what is vetted, investigated, tested, paid, whatever, it still ain't right. It ain't gonna never be right. And they're committed to that. Uh, but so many people have shown through multiple capital raises that it's right for them. And I would challenge people to say, hey, if there's people that say it's right for them, even though it's not right for you, why do you feel so committed to use Jay's name in videos and blogs and websites and everything else on Tulsa name to voice your opinion how it ain't right and you're not even a part of the company? It's not your business. So why would you be minding it? It's not your business at all. And it's already been tested and vetted. So it says really less about me and more about them that they'd be so committed and mostly black people to tearing down a black organization and a black man they're, they, they make it harder for me to do my job. Those distractions, no, not many fund managers have to go through those distractions. So I believe they intentionally distract me so I don't sleep at night. I have distractions and frustrations and anxiety, even going through a pandemic. And I went through a personal surgery last year and having a daughter and life and everything else. I think that they that's part of their tactic. So I don't perform. So I fail because of their efforts. And they can say, aha, we told y'all so, right? It's like, it's, and that's just a, a little theory I have. But um, again, I can't speak for those who speak on other people's business that's not theirs. I'm busy minding my business, our business, our over 14,000 partners, historic company business. Um, but by God's grace and my spiritual alignment, knowing that this is the price of leadership. This is the price of being revolutionary. This is the price of disrupting the system. This is the price of leading a people who have been economically enslaved. Harriet didn't have everybody saying, you go girl. Nat Turner didn't have everybody saying, all right, bro, we out. Fred Hampton didn't have everybody saying, I'm with the revolution. Northern Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or, or, or Marcus Garvey, O.W. Gurley, the founder of Black Wall Street, they had whole campaigns about him. They had campaigns about Marcus Garvey that said, Garvey must go. So I understand that at this point of my career and my purpose in leadership, um, this comes with the territory. This is the revolutionary handbook. This is the black leader handbook. This is the script. If you do something progressive, you do something revolutionary, you do something disruptive, you're gonna get this. And so I can't fall into the trap of losing the sleep of falling into all the noises and the whispers in my ear, of all the distractions, because I got over 14,000 families that counting on me and us and the decisions that we make. I have a staff that's counting on that. I have a legacy that's counting on that. And I can't guarantee a win or perfection because you can't guarantee success in any business. You legally can't in our uh, filing space. You legally can't guarantee an investment, but you can't even do it as an entrepreneur. Not one entrepreneur could. Not even uh, 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 Elon Musk couldn't guarantee He can't guarantee success. The great Elon Musk, can't. he can't guarantee success of Tesla. Right? Am I right or wrong, Sean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so with me being mature enough to know that, I got to know that I've reached a new level, which is going to bring new devils. Uh, again... You know, with, with, with great power comes great responsibility, I suppose. Um, you know, this just comes with the territory. So, you know, I think it's a heavy load to carry for anybody. 
Um, you know, and you seem to be carrying it well. You seem to be, uh, you seem to come to, to a place that you understand that this is your purpose and it's what you're here to do. So if that is what keeps you going, I get it and I respect it. Um, would you say that that, that that is exactly why you're able to weather this storm? Is it you've determined that this is my purpose? Um, I'll say yes, and I believe I'm built for it. I believe all my life circumstances, obstacles, challenges have built me for this kind of pressure. Like, this is some pressure. Don't get it messed up. It's some pressure. It's just pressure running the company, period. It's pressure running the company with four, over 14,000 partners. Imagine having 14,000 partners. Pressure. It's pressure as being a husband. It's pressure as being a black man, King. But I also recall pressure when I was on parole in New York. I was on bail in Maryland, on bail in New Jersey, and still selling drugs, trying to pay my lawyer to fight my case. Pressure. I remember going to the parole board, hoping that they let me go early. Pressure. I remember the cops pulling me over on I-95 in Delaware and had a quarter kilo in the trunk. Pressure. I remember my early business days, getting started in real estate in 2005, not knowing how to send an email coming off the streets. Pressure. I remember when they said, uh, you can't do real estate with felonies. And I had three of them. Still got my license. Still turned up. Pressure. So I believe that God has built me for this, that, that those bankruptcy and being broke phase, being a millionaire, blowing it all, losing it all, and trying to figure out how to get it all back. Crazy pressure. 30 years old, broke. Broke as hell broke. No car, can't even go see your daughter in Virginia. Pressure. But so my faith has been built up. I believe I'm called to do this. I believe I'm a miracle man. I'm a walking miracle. I'm an extension of the bigger God. And so all that empowers me. I do have my days and my moments. I'm also human. And I have my moments. And I see my wife cry and suffer because of people trying to pressure us. Putting stuff out there. Talking about her husband. Talking about her. Talking about our baby. Before our baby was even born. But like you said, with power moves, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be power opposition. You got to determine if you're built for it or not. And um, we've seen too many examples to know, like, I, I, you know, you got to decide really when you all in for your people. And I think the biggest part I said was like, I've always said that, and many of us say it, we say what we would do in a situation. Oh, man, if the police were beating down Eric Garner in front of me, I would have Right, but who's really willing to make a sacrifice? And so I do believe it's my purpose and calling. And you know, in these interviews, um, I know you ask a lot of direct questions, et cetera. But for me, it's not again excuses, it's not even my explanation, it's just my truth. I'm just walking in my truth and just walking in my purpose. Like this Jay Morrison all day, every day. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.